RPM. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about how high revving engines happen. How do you get an engine to rev to 9,000 RPM, for example, in this AP1S2000, uh, but there are plenty of other vehicles out there that do it. And so we're going to be talking about how does high revving engines, uh, how does that all work? And so first of all, why would you want an engine to rev high? And so this is all about power. So horsepower is a function of torque multiplied by RPM. So if you can keep torque constant or relatively constant and you can increase RPM, then you can make more power. So that's the reason the logic behind having a high revving engine. Very simply put, it means you make more power. So what makes it possible? Well, the first thing I want to talk about is a little bit of geometry and average piston speeds. And so something you'll notice across all engines is piston speeds won't exceed you know a certain value they don't get too much faster uh, than about you know 60 miles per hour in movement and part of that has to do with flame propagation and how quickly combustion occur can occur if you think about a piston uh, moving downward at a certain speed once it gets really fast it's going to start you know matching the speed at which you know that flame front's traveling and at that point uh, it's not really producing that much useful work so there's an effective speed there's a, there's a speed at which combustion will you know occur and still be very efficient and still be very useful. And so if you do the math, looking at engines that are high revving, you'll find that the piston speeds don't actually differ all that much from lower revving engines. They may be, you know, a bit faster, uh, but ultimately they're not going to exceed a certain point. So if you look at the math for this AP1S2000, uh, you'll see a certain speed, you know, somewhere around 56 miles per hour. Now, with the second generation Honda S2000, they increased the stroke of the engine to increase displacement from 2 liters to 2.2 liters. Well, in increasing the stroke, they increased the average piston speed. And so Honda stated the reason why they decreased uh, the red line, the fuel cutoff for the AP2S2000 down to 8,200 RPM from 9,000 RPM is because of piston speeds. And so if you do the math for that, if you look at you know that increase in stroke length, uh, that means a faster piston speed, but decreasing the engine RPM means a slower piston speed. So ultimately, the piston speed isn't much different than the AP1 Honda S2000. It's a little bit slower, uh, but they reduce the engine RPM because the stroke is longer. So this has a over square engine, uh, which means that the bore is wider than the stroke, uh, the distance, the width of the cylinder versus how far that piston moves up and down versus the AP2 S2000 has an under square uh, bore to stroke ratio where the bore is actually slightly narrower than the stroke, the distance that piston travels up and down. Ultimately, whether it's under square or over square doesn't dictate whether or not it can be high revving. 8200 RPM is still a very high revving engine for the AP2 S2000, but overall it has a very short stroke. And so that short stroke is what allows you to have those lower piston speeds. Now, aside from geometry and piston speeds, you want to make sure that your reciprocating mass isn't very high. So for example, in this S2000, the pistons are forged aluminum. Aluminum, because they're less weight, that means you've got less reciprocating mass moving up and down. Same with some engines will use uh, hollow intake valves, and the reason being is to reduce that reciprocating mass. Likewise, you know, rotary engines, the Mazda RX-8, uh, if you got the manual version, you could rev to 9,000 RPM. Well, there's no reciprocating mass in that engine. It's all rotational. And so because of that, because you're not changing the direction of a, a mass, and it's all spinning in one direction constantly, you can rev higher. It allows you a bit of freedom in, in how you rev up that engine. And obviously the engines have to breathe. Uh, so if you can have a torque curve that's flat, great. But as you start to get in those higher RPMs, it's harder to get a lot of air into the engine. And so, you know, the trick that Honda has, which everybody knows, is VTEC. So once you get above 6,000 RPM, you'll hear that cam profile change. And what that's doing is it's opening your intake valves more to allow you to bring in more air. And there's all kinds of different systems out there that optimize this. Uh, every brand, you know, has their method of doing it. But ultimately, a lot of different companies will choose methods that allow for more airflow at higher RPM so you can make additional power. For Honda, it's this uh, 
step system so it switches cam profiles um, and so there's a little pin that will lock up and it will allow it to switch over cam profiles once you get to a certain specified RPM and you'll hear that you'll have that audible note where it changes uh, from the lower cam profile to the higher lift cam profile which allows for more air within the engine and allows you to still have usable torque even at higher RPM when you have less time to pull in air. Now, if an engine can't rev high, is that a bad thing? Absolutely not. So, you know, diesel engines tend to have very high torque, long stroke, uh, very low revving with high compression ratios. They tend to be heavier because they're built for these higher torques, uh, the internal, you know, combustion, higher heat and higher pressure in there. Uh, but they are much more efficient and they can still produce plenty of power, plenty of torque. So, you know, it's not necessarily that it's good or bad to have a high revving engine. It's just a different strategy to produce power so you can rev high and have lower torque and not worry about it because you can compensate with gearing for torque because you can rev so high or you can have high torque engines that may not rev quite as high uh, but you know you don't have to worry about revving as high because you've got all that torque down low it's just a different strategy it's not that one is necessarily better than the other um, but it is cool you know just from an audible standpoint revving up an engine to something like 9,000 rpm uh, having those high revving notes uh, that come through the exhaust it's it's a it's a cool thing to experience so i think it's neat um, i think it's cool that there are multiple strategies out there thank you guys for watching if you do have any questions or comments feel free to leave those below